Welcome to Extra Time, presented by Globant. Ali Moreno, Stevie mm. Nicholl and Kay Murray. Just the three of us for this mm. one today. Oh, nice and cosy, yeah. Cool as you like, cosy. Michael Matthews sending in the first question. It says, Stevie, should Liverpool consider a short-term deal to sign Depay from Barcelona to cover Diaz and Jota injuries as he can play on the left and centre and only has six months remaining on his contract? Yeah, I mean, why not? Guy's got ability. Um, if Barcelona, considering the situation they're in financially, um, maybe it could work. It certainly would be... Look, if Liverpool had the pie on the bench to come on, that wouldn't be a bad thing. Considering how difficult these things seem to always be to work out, it probably seems unlikely. But as far as being a good idea, absolutely. Would that be attractive? for Depay? Uh, I suppose it would be for Depay, but he better be willing to press and to run around and defend high energy, which isn't always his strength. Uh, but there would have to be a change in the mindset and what the expectations would be for him as a player. And while he can play down the middle, I don't think that's where he's most comfortable. He likes to come from the left-hand side. And if he's going to do that, he better be willing to do some running. All right, speaking of Depay's pressing, there's a stat. We had this in the ah. full show, fewest interventions in the defending third. He's behind Akram Afif of yeah, Qatar. Yeah. Gets a shout out. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Go on, Akram. Does. Mbappe top in the list and then Ronaldo and Messi behind Depay. Um, Depay a little bit younger, <laughs> it has to be said as well, than Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. <laughs> Okay. So, so, so not a good idea then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Whatever you guys want. Stats don't, stats don't back it up. It? It's amazing. Are you going to back it up it's now? It's actually what, now. It's amazing what a large kick up the backside can do to some mm. players. Mm. Ali was talking earlier on about it's amazing how when players' contracts are coming to an end, mm. all of a sudden they get a burst of energy. What a So scene. maybe Mr. Depay <laughs> will get a burst of energy. Maybe he will. OK, to all, in paying tribute to Mihailovic, where would you rank him in terms of free kick takers? Is he in the same class as Pirlo, Juninho, Beckham and Messi? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. He, he was the generation after me, so as I'm finishing, he's getting into it. And of course, in the 90s in particular, we started getting a lot of Italian football, because that's where the money was then, and all the players were going there. And so that was the first time I remember seeing Mihailovic's free kicks. You know, he would, as, as a player, he was a good player. But as a, as a free kick taker, he was as good as any of those names. You know, he could, he could smash it through a gap with power. He could bend it up and over the wall under the crossbar. He could whip it in the, around the outside. I mean, this guy scored every sort of free kick that you can imagine. Uh, on a regular basis, not 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 hitting the wall ten times and then the next time we went in. Who are you, guy, who are you talking about? Was, this, this guy was this guy was dynamite. Who does that? The uh, hitter in the wall all the time. A certain uh, Cristiano. Oh. What's his second name again? <laughs> Who's that? Not Sinisa Mihailovic. <laughs> anyway, be, hold on a minute. Hold on. Let's, let's be honest. To be fair to Ronaldo. Uh -huh. It was the, the latter years of his career when he was hitting the wall a lot. He did, he did score a few from the feet. Come well, on, I, I, let's, I let's be honest. I, I just asked let's you a not, question. Let's not, you know, the guy could take a free kick, but just unfortunately, he kind of ran out of juice a little bit towards the end. Yeah, Ale, where was this attacking football from Croatia in the Argentina game? Um... Well, I don't know that they did something different today than what they did against Argentina. It's just they're playing against a team that is not as strong as Argentina mm -hmm. in Morocco. But they still today show some of their deficiencies. Uh, once they get into the attacking half, into the final third, while it was a great goal for Morsic, a lot of the plays were breaking down once they got up until that point. It, it's just... For them, they just don't quite have the same talent level in the final third than they do than they do in the middle third. So when you think of Brozovic and you think of Kovacic and of course Luka Modric, and then you project forward, and now you're depending on Kramaric and Pekovic, and, and 
this, these are guys that are serviceable players, but they're certainly not elite talent. And so the attacking football for Croatia, I don't think it's so much uh, dependent upon what, who they play. It's just that's who, the players that they are. They, 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 they're limited in that, in that part of the field. They, they play the same way regardless of yeah. the opposition. And they think that if we're at our best, we're a match for anybody. And sometimes they're not at their best. That, they, you know, they're not, they're not a side. You know, we, we were talking in the show about, you know, are Argentina going to play three at the back? They're going to play four at the back. But Croatia don't do that. They know exactly. Every single person in that squad, those players, the coaches, they know exactly what they try to do. And regardless of the opposition, that's what they try and do. It just so happens as well that they came up against the vintage Messi on that day, which yep. also doesn't help. Yep. Yeah, on, on many levels, Croatia's performance against Argentina, you have to remember but that for the first 20 minutes or so, it was very much all Croatia all the time, and Argentina were having difficulties getting a hold of the ball, and the penalty happened, and that sort of changed the game itself. And then after that, Croatia seemed to gather some more momentum, and then that goal from Julian Alvarez, the touch and tackle, touch and tackle happens again. After that, it was very difficult for them to come back, but it wasn't like they were completely and totally outplayed by Argentina. They were outplayed in moments, and certainly the third goal is the best example of that in the genius of Lionel Messi. Both of Manchester United's first choice centre backs have made the final of the World Cup. What does Stevie make of this development and does he think that United finally have a solid defence to build their team on? Well, I don't think it's a surprise that Varane has done what he's done. You know what you're getting? You buy a you buy a world-class defender and, and that's what he does. Um, you know, regardless of what you think of, of his, his partner beside him, generally at United and, and Martinez, um, they're a good combination. Did you just say something nice about Martinez? No, I mean, him and Varane get on well, yeah. <laughs> no. Want, no, 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 no. If it's you want okay. to start asking a different question of where the deficiencies, <laughs> then that's a different answer. No, no. But as a partnership, they've actually done well. There was, there there was nothing nice about that because... In between the lines there, he said, whatever you may think painful. of his partner. <laughs> that was painful. <laughs> whatever you may that think of Baran's partner. <laughs> I, was, I thought I was being nice there. <laughs> Knowing Stevie, that oh, pretty yeah, much right, was him yeah. being nice, no, but, right? Listen, very positive, very look, positive. As I said, as, he as individuals, tall now after as individuals there are different answers. As a partnership, they've done well. All right, we'll take that. We'll take it. <laughs> well, well, let me give you an example, right? John Stones and Harry Maguire were great together in, uh, for England. Made very few mistakes and were a good solid partnership, right? Yeah. Now, if you want to start talking about them individually, then that's a different conversation. Right. So he had to bring up Ronaldo. Now he's had to bring up England. Mm. Let's just try to deflect. <laughs> <laughs> who's, Don't your, shield up. who's your X factor for either France or Argentina tomorrow? Uh, who's your X factor? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, you have the obvious ones, right? But let's go... But even Hernan Crespo said it might not be the obvious one in the final. Well, he's taking a right chance, isn't he? <laughs> 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 if, we, if we ignore the obvious ones... OK. Messi... Because they're the triple X factor. Yeah, Messi, Mbappe, Griezmann. <laughs> I'm thinking if you're... Argentina, you have to be very mindful of what happens on, on the opposite side with Usman and Dembele because as inconsistent as he has been and continues to be, on a good day, he can really take advantage of whoever is on that left-hand side for Argentina defensively. So Dembele on 1v1 situations, if you're paying attention to everybody on, over here and don't pay attention to that guy, he may just take advantage of it. So I'm, he could be a difference maker just because we are thinking of everybody else and not paying enough attention to them badly. You'd probably say that France have got more... If you, if you take Messi and, and, and Mbappé out, you'd probably say that France have got more X-Factor guys that maybe would score a goal than Argentina. I think that would be the best answer to that. OK. What kind of dog does Stevie have? Because it's so <laughs> famous now. <laughs> Haggis. Haggis is a Newfoundland. Oh. Uh, oh. oh, wait, wait. Oh. he's coming, oh, he's, he's coming, you just wait for it, wait for it, Listen. you just, you just wait, this is great camera work by you, Stevie. Oh. 
Stevie sent this yeah, to Dan. Yeah. And after Kane missed the penalty against <laughs> France. Yeah, I was. <clears throat> for those that didn't see it, I mean, what happened was when Harry Kane missed the penalty. You decided I, to try and upset a huge yes. England fan in Dan yes. Thomas. I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a video of Haggis getting two treats because Harry Kane kicked it over the crossbar. <laughs> Right. It all makes sense. Unfortunately, my videoing skills, as you see, <laughs> were rather off on that particular occasion. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. On that particular occasion? <laughs> yeah, because normally I'm pretty good. Oh, all right. Well, That's anyway. what happens when you kick a man while he's down. Yeah, karma, I guess. I guess. But anyway, tell us more about Haggis. Well, Haggis got his two, his two <laughs> treats anyway. And a lot more when the final whistle went. <laughs> How old is he? What's his character like? Oh, I'll tell you what, he's one year old. He's, he's, he's a year. And the thing that people don't realise about Newfies is they have like a, they're called a Newfisaurus. <laughs> <laughs> In the Newfie world, people call them a Newfisaurus or a Raptosaurus. In because the Newfie they like, world. <laughs> well, because when you take them a walk, they'll jump at you. Now, when you've got a dog that's 130 pounds, takes a run and jumps at you, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite a challenge. Let's just say that when we go a walk, Eleanor, I take the lead and Eleanor, Eleanor prefers that I take the lead. Because up until about 18 months, that's what they do. And then they calm down and they stop doing all that stuff. Did, did you they're, just... very mouth, they're very mouthy as well. Ah. So when they're excited to see you, they like try to eat your hand or your arm or anything that gets in the road. You know, people see them and they see this big, this big cuddly soft New thing thing's... that just lies around and does nothing. Well, they don't. They're very active, never leave you alone. They're always back, regardless of where you are, and I mean where you are, they're beside you. Oh. Right, so. and, and you described him as a raptosaurus. I, 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 what is a raptosaurus? Or were you thinking Velociraptor well, you know, well, you know, Tyrannosaurus? When you, when you look, well, when you look at all the, the, the sauruses. Okay. Right? <laughs> I don't know that there is a raptor. Well, you see them, they go on their back legs and the two arms are like that. That's, you know when you see the kids' that's toys? A, that's a Tyrannosaurus. Okay, a Tyrannosaurus, yeah. <laughs> so, you, so when you see a Tyrannosaurus Rex, right, and it's yeah. up on its back legs, yes. it's got two on the ground and two like that. Yeah, and it's more like Well, that's what he does, and he jumps at you, and that's what other people's dogs do, like new feet. New fees. But they, they grow out of it. In the but new fee world. In the new fee world. In the new fee world. world. Okay. They grow well, out of yeah. it, I can, assure, I can assure you. When there was a 130 pound dog jumping at you, you, you know all about it. So that is an insight to the new fee world yeah. and haggis. And the Soros knowledge. Oh, haggis. He's a good boy. It's a Tyrannosaurus Rex, it's a Toronto fan, all right? <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it for the latest edition of Extra Time. Thank That's you so it. much for sending your questions and thanks for thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.